you know, motherfuckers be reacting on the spot and forgot how they react. They must have was like, yo, last night I lost my fucking real cool. I, I lost my whole composure. I said a bunch of shit because I was drinking Hennessy, but I really realized I made a fool of myself last night. You know, and that's what happens with a lot of these motherfuckers. They forget a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? So what, you know, what made it to where you didn't do, uh, you didn't do drugs, you didn't do alcohol, you didn't do that stuff? Well, I drink champagne. I like champagne and I drink champagne. It makes me feel good. I'm not an alcoholic. You know, I'm not like these guys. A lot of these dudes had to go, you know, go get they self checked out and check in all to Betty Ford and all that. I don't I don't have to do all that shit, you know, and I could drink. And then you got people that don't drink because they're told, like, I don't drink no more. I'm doing different. But it's not the point. If it's, it's the point of is too much. Can you handle what you're doing? You know? Can can you handle what you're doing? I can handle what I'm doing. You know, I, I have the craziest fans. They drop cocaine in my hand, pills, fucking um, all kinds of shit. You know, people pass me all kinds of bottles, like syrup and all this shit, telling me, yo, have a good night. I'd be like, I throw the shit away because I don't need, I don't use all that shit. I drink champagne. I drink champagne and I might, you know, take some royal honey. That's all. Champagne and royal honey, you're not like you that's so i drink you who drinks and but i don't need all that shit to function you know these guys got a certain way they feel they need to function you know it's just like you know it's just like the, the songs you know they gotta get a certain high to get a sound you know they gotta feel like if i get fucked up that's gonna be my sound you know it's gonna sound like i'm fucked up so then they want people to adjust to the sound like this is my fucked up sound. This is how I sound. Like, I got that fucked up sound. Damn, I'm fucked up. I'm drinking. You know, that's what people want to sound like that, but to each his own. I'm not into that shit like that, you know, but yeah, that's what they thrive upon, you know? Well, that's one of the other but things. But that ain't a natural sound. Give that nigga a couple years when he get mature, he gonna be like, damn, I gotta get fucked up again to get like that, to get that way again, you know? You know? Yeah, because even on uh, back to bust the facts, you were talking about no, uh, no smoking or sniffing. So yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't need all that shit to make a song. You know, I'm a natural song maker. You know, I see how a lot of people function. You know, I've been around different shit. You know, I work with Roger Troutman and stuff, and I like Roger Troutman. He was a great person. You know, and I like the way he get down in the studio. Like he was that vocal of shit is originally him. You know, you don't see a lot of these dudes. You know. Giving that out, giving that, giving that out. You know, Roger Troutman was the king of that shit. You know, yeah. When yeah. I worked on Black Elvis with him, you know, he's the king of that talk box shit. Yeah. You know. So speaking of Black Elvis, how throughout your career, especially as a solo artist, how have you navigated being on a bigger label like Roughhouse Columbia versus doing? independent stuff totally independent how does that shape how you approach well when i was when i i know these people with majors i don't know how they feel i know when i felt with a mate when i was with a major i felt handcuffed like that was the worst situation you know when even when i was locked in sony one time it it, it feels so different when you're in a major it feels like you married somebody and you're trying to get a divorce and you don't like the woman or whatever and the the record label feels like that, but when you're independent, that's why I like the Bay Area a lot too, because I think artists did a lot of little independent deals up there and they had that freedom to make records and stuff, like everybody up there, you know, all the labels and stuff, they were just like, you do an album, you know, all of them guys had albums and they just dropped their songs. And, you know, I liked it, that feeling, you know, even when I was, when I had Dr. Doom up there with, um a distributor it was just a good feeling to put out records and then you put another record out like you know it was like a, a pigeonhole you know some of these artists is signed and they can only do stuff under the label it's like you gotta tell a label every time you go somewhere like i gotta like even when you want to do a, a feature you gotta do something they get a part you know they get a part cut of what you're doing all the time everything has got to be done through a strict a strict rule you know, it's like a pimp, you know, sometimes a label could be like a pimp. He wants your money, you know, he's sending you out 
you know, you work the street, you do the John, you gotta bring the pimp back a little cut. You know, the label is like, he's the pimp and you know, you got the skirt. <laughs> you had a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and all these dudes with big distribution deals too, they just a bigger, bigger whore. It ain't like you a lighter whore. You just, you're a bigger whore, but you still got a bigger pimp behind you. That's all. You just got a bigger pimp with a bigger car. That's all. All that shit about, uh, you know, you got your own label. You just got a bigger, you just got a bigger pimp. Well, there it is. You got, a bigger, you got a bigger motherfucker to give the smack to. That's all. It's just that he got a bigger El Dorado than the other dude who just drives a little 190 Cadillac. I mean, a, a little baby STS. That's all. You just got a bigger pimp. You got a bigger pimp smack you around. <laughs> all right. Well, cool, Keith. <laughs> you got a bigger pimp, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yes. So, well, there you go. So, I mean, anytime you want to talk to me, you could talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, and it ain't only the girls, Sean. You ain't got to be a girl to work the streets. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you, and we could put jewelry on you, and you could work it with your jewelry. You put, you, we get your Ferrari. You still. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like like I said, Sean, I'm here to tell you the truth, whether they like it or not. You know what I'm saying? I look at this shit. It's a, it's a, it's a nice circus we watch. It's a nice circus. We got a lot of clowns in it. We got a lot of clowns. That's we got a lot of motherfuckers that's working the flying trapeze, all kinds of shit. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how I look at the. That's how I look at the shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, <laughs> so it, it, it's it's all good. You know, it's like you said. We you just got a bigger pimp, but a bigger pimp over you pimping to work your little whores. That's how I go. You know, all all this shit is. You know, that's how it's painted. That's the way it's painted. Because oh. when you see. When you see that little name is on shit, it just be them little tiny names sitting above your name. That little tiny name is your bigger pimp. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't give a fuck if it's in the scope. I don't give a fuck if it's uh we could go all day down the line, universal, all, all that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, Sean, you paint the picture. Yeah. All right, well, anything else before we go? Uh, you know, like you said, I'm working on Broadway Billy. You know, I got a nice video coming out too, to soon be coming out. The uh, you gotta see this video, video surprise. You know, a, definitely a big video surprise you're gonna like. You know, everybody should be looking out for it. It's a movie, it's called a movie, it's gonna be called like the movie that you've been waiting to see too something it's it's a it's like a movie and then um i don't got nothing to really say but a bunch of bullshit documentaries coming out basically not i'm at not that i'm in them just a lot of probably unfalse you know false stories and you know everybody got documentary you know everybody grew up in the hood and came a long way and you know they came up through hard times to get in the business. You know, same story. I mean, we're going to see a lot of that too. Everybody got that. So I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I'm doing what I do. And like I say, I think I've been okay doing what I do in the business. Like you said, you got a lot of dudes that are not happy. You got a lot of, Sean, we got a lot of Uncle Toms. We got a lot of Uncle Toms out there. And you know, a lot of people grew up, everybody wanted to have the great girlfriend and the girlfriend that everybody wants you know, on television and everything. And I see a lot too in, in the rap too, like everybody get the little house on the prairie girl. And they like the black sheep in the family. The guy becomes the black sheep in the family because he always wanted to be in it. And 
they don't know how to act because they finally got themselves to a destiny that they thought was the greatest. And everybody wanted to be uh, the Uncle Tom. Everybody's the Uncle Tom. All I see is a bunch of Uncle Toms and it's the place where they never got to and they don't know how to act. And like you said, they marry and meet these girls that they had, which is cool. But the point I'm making is that I'm starting to see a lot of that too. Like I'm starting to see a lot of the sellout coming in. A lot of the sellout is building up. Like everybody feels that this, they forgot. They forgot their high school girlfriend. <laughs> I'm serious. They forgot their real high school girlfriend that really, you know, do things nice, fry them chicken, do stuff. You know, I'm saying you got a lot of girls that are nice, but I say a lot of these showgirls and stuff like that, I don't think they could even make collard greens. They can't even make no collard greens. They can't cook or nothing. So, you know, they got a lot of just models basically you know models just just being models like they can't do anything but shop and show off but not nothing like pertaining in the kitchen and stuff like that cooking and you know they, i don't think they know how to make a hot dog like they can't boil a hot dog they can't even get a sabrette and put it in some bread and put like golden's mustard on it like i'm serious that's fucked up you know what i'm saying yeah that's what they call they call it home sweet home <laughs> that's what they call home sweet home sean huh I said, well, and they marry and they and they the black you know they 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 the baboon you know the baboon is with the bab long as the baboon is with it he like i'm a panda in this bitch i'm a panda in this bitch you know, he didn't turn into it. So it's just, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just seeing a lot of the vision is funny out there. Like you said, you know, all, of, all the awards and all that, all that, you know. So that's the shit we got to deal with. And I don't know, you know, till I see you again the next time with the truth. Mm -hmm. The fucking truth. Bust the facts, man. Bust the facts. Bust the facts, man. Tell them, put the facts up in their head and fax it up. There it is. <laughs> Tell them right, to that. All right, Shawnee. Sean. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Love. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of Gangsta Rap features exclusive interviews with Ice-T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The History of Gangsta Rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip-hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.